Cable Corporation of America presents The Magic Key. radio facilities of the Radio Corporation of America, the magic key of RCA turns to present an hour of entertainment featuring Colonel Snoop Nagel and Bud in an unusual broadcast straight from the golf links of the Soundview Country Club in Great Neck, Long Island, the sensational young violinist Joseph Knitzer, Marion Telva, long one of America's outstanding singers, the rippling rhythms of Shep Fields and his dance orchestra, American mountain music by the Tennessee Ramblers with Dick Hartman, in contrast to Swiss mountain music by famous yodelers coming to you from the Alps themselves, and Frank Black and the NBC Concert Orchestra, who opened the program with Covent Garden from the English composer Eric Coates' suite, London.
How far will your voice carry? A few hundred yards? Well, in the silent mountain fastnesses of the Alps, Swiss yodelers are able to communicate by means of their strange, long-drawn calls between peaks that are often great distances apart. This afternoon, upon a glacier 14,000 feet up the slope of the mighty Jungfrau, a little party of yodelers, including the world champion Greetly Wenger, waits to show us how the yodeling songs of Swiss folk music really sound in their native haunt. The magic key of RCA turns across the Atlantic Ocean, across the face of the European continent, to the peak of the Jungfrau. Hello, America. Hello, America. This is young Frau York, Switzerland calling. So beauty is your speaker. We are transmitting a program of yodeling from this wonderful alpine region of eternal ice and snow, 11,340 feet above sea level. The Burmese yodel club will now sing Morgen Frieden und Schöne Nacht. in the heights of Radio City, newest of New York's man-made peaks and headquarters of the family of RCA. Our own homespun American-style mountain music enjoys a popularity which seems not to diminish with the years. From the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee come the Tennessee Ramblers with Dick Hoffman, a Victor-recording hillbilly group whose admirers, especially through certain sections of the South, are practically fanatical in their devotion. Let's see which you prefer, Swiss yodelers or American hillbillies. The magic key of RCA turns to the Tennessee Ramblers with Dick Hartman, who has chosen for the first selection this afternoon the characteristic old tune, Nobody's Darling But Mine. Come sit by my side, little darling, and lay your cool hand on my brow, and promise me that you Nobody, darling, but mine. Be nobody, darling, but mine, sweetheart. Be honest, be faithful, be kind, and promise me that. 
that nobody knows. Be nobody's darling but mine, sweetheart. Be honest, be faithful, be kind. And promise me that you will never be nobody's darling. Goodbye, goodbye, little darling. I'm leaving this whole world behind. Your promise me that you will never be nobody's darling but mine. Be nobody's darling but mine. Be honest, be faithful, be kind, and promise me that you will never be nobody's darling but mine. No picture of American hillbilly music would be complete if it did not include a hymn. And so for an encore, the Tennessee Ramblers with Dick Hartman sing for us one of their own favorites, What Would You Give in Exchange? Just five years ago, the great Metropolitan Opera contralto Marion Telva retired to enjoy a few years of home life, as she herself put it. Ever since, she has been besieged by requests from admirers who want to hear that rich contralto voice once more. But Miss Telva has so far consented to make only a few rare appearances in concert. Today, it is our privilege to present her to you over the air. Marion Telva, one of America's outstanding stars of concert and opera.
The magic key of RCA turns to Marion Telva singing the Amour of Yazede from Cesson's opera, Samson and Delilah. For an encore, Marion Telva displays the versatility of her rich contralto voice singing Cecilia by Richard Strauss.
of RCA will be interested to know that RCA Victor dealers will soon have on display a new 1937 line of RCA Victor radios. I wonder if you know what the first and perhaps the most severe test of any merchandise is. It's the attitude of the merchant himself. During the past week, hundreds of merchants have been inspecting the new 1937 RCA Victor instruments at special dealers' showings. And here's what took place. These merchants were so enthusiastic about RCA Victor's new values that most of them actually ordered two to three times more sets than last year. Nothing could be more gratifying to the RCA organization than this response. And in our opinion, nothing could better attest the exceptional qualities of these new models. These merchants examined each set with a professional minuteness, a technical knowledge that would have overlooked no fault, but they found none. And when they saw that 28 different models of these new 1937 RCA Victor radios were priced under $100, they were, frankly, amazed. We had known that these radios incorporated many new features, many new improvements built out of the Radio Corporation of America's engineering experience in operating the world's largest broadcasting and worldwide radio communication services. We had hoped that they would upset all previous idea of radio performance and radio value. We are proud that the attitude of these dealers confirmed our feelings. To those of you who are planning to buy a new radio or phonograph radio, we urge you to compare RCA Victor's beautiful cabinet, superb engineering features and higher fidelity tone with the offerings of other radio manufacturers. If you do, we are sure that your choice will be the choice of an increasing number of people RCA Victor. The 1937 instrument will be on display in most RCA Victor dealers' stores within the next 10 days. They may be purchased on convenient terms of payment.
The Magic Key, unlocking a world of entertainment, presented for your interest and pleasure by members of the family of RCA, who, individually and collectively, offer you every service in radio. People can lay siege to the world of fashion for years and years and never gain entree. But if you happen to have what that chic world wants, you can literally take it by storm. That's what Shep Fields and his rippling rhythm accomplished. From the very first days of the formation of his orchestra, the genial young maestro has been one of society's favorites, and his recent recordings for Victor and radio appearances are gaining him a wider and wider audience. The magic key of RCA turns to Shep Fields and his rippling rhythm, who have chosen for their first selection this afternoon the popular melody, Us on a Bus. <laughs> and his rippling rhythm give their own sophisticated version of On a Beach at Bali Bali.
Valley Valley It wasn't long till we were holding hands And while we strolled along the beach together We kissed her and she promised to be mine You could have knocked me over with a feather When she told me that she came from Caroline The day I sailed across the ocean To find romance across the sea I never had the slightest notion I'd meet the girl who used to live next door to me And now we own a cottage in the valley A little something else that doesn't mind It happened on the beach at Valley Valley And ended up way down in Caroline golfers can't be wrong. Yet the other millions of Americans sometimes wonder just what is it about this game of golf that has so fascinated. Well, suppose we take you straight to a country club link at Great Neck, Long Island, where special portable microphones have been set up. The magic key of RCA now turns to the 18th hole of the Soundview Country Club, where we shall see what we shall see. Thank you, Ben Grower. Yes, we're standing now on the 18th tee of the Soundview Country Club, Colonel Stupnagel, Bud, and I, and a large gallery of lookers-on who are trying to find out why two people who know so little about the game of golf are selected to be out here today. When I asked Bud only a minute ago just what he knew about the game of golf, he replied, uh, How are you, Bob Waldrop? You see, which only goes to show. The Colonel, on the other hand, gave me a much more learned answer. I said to him, Colonel, why does golf appeal to you? His answer was, What's that? So there you are. You can tell by that just what's going to happen here this afternoon. Colonel Stupnagel and Bud, the whole darn golf course, including the traps, is yours. Well, thanks an awful lot, Bob. I appreciate that very, very much. Colonel, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, Bud. That's good. We have a foursome here on the uh, 18th tee at good old Soundview out of Great Neck. Mr. Chick Molitor will now address the ball and whiz. Hurry up, the Chick. You hit it. Oh, it's a beauty, boy. It's a beauty. Good. The ball went right out there. It's sort of very nice thing of it. That's a, oh, <laughs> that's a good. No. no, it's rolling rolling back into the water. He's playing water polo. Very fine. Now, Mr. Put Hernandez is now uh, uh, stuffing things, but hit. Come on, Ray. Oh, it's a, it's a long ball. It's way up by the third base. <laughs> Wrong. Wait, huh? It's wrong. It's, it's baseball you're thinking of. Mr. Scott is now addressing the ball in his fashion. And here it goes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely in the water, I would say. How many are there in this foursome? Five or four? No, only four. Only four. Now we're starting. Oh, see? Well, we got a baseball score for you, folks. Uh, just came in the giant six. Uh... Yeah, we're uh, walking now. The crowd is following us, and uh, we're going across the bridge over the uh, water uh, in front of the 18th tee. Uh, Brian, you say yes. something, please? Yes. Uh, as we cross the uh, water here, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that uh, Mr. Scott is seen with his uh, trousers slightly raised looking for the ball that he hit in the water. However, we're passing now under a very, very, very cute little... Uh, Sort of a cupolo coming out again into the sunshine. I want to remind all you listeners that this is the uh, national closed. You know, the national open uh, closed yesterday, and today the national close opens here at Soundview. 
Uh, Stoop Nagel, the vice president in charge of uh, caddies out here, is following me. Won't you say a few words, Colonel? But will you explain to me why it is that in baseball, when you get when you get nine runs and the other team gets seven runs, you win. But in golf, uh, in golf, uh, it's the low score that wins. I don't understand why that is. Do you? Well, it's a little thing we made up. I mean, uh, those of us on the board in charge of golf, uh, I, I think you have something there, though, because... Yeah, but, but we got a uh, we got a wire here from uh, Babe Ruth. A wire from Babe Ruth? Yeah, Babe Ruth, read, read it, in, it, it says, uh, run home. Isn't that nice? I like that. It's yeah, very... Yeah. It's a swell wire. It's and a radiogram. A radiogram? Oh, that's right. I remember. Yes. I now, listen, here's another one, too. We're just coming up to the... Uh, another radiogram. We got one from Babe Ruth. Uh, we're walking up now towards the 18th green, fellas. Stand by. Here comes, here's one from Fred Aaron. It says, I hope you boys stick to the script when you take over my show July 1st. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, Fred. Uh, don't you think that's nice? Yeah, I think, uh, Bud, uh, we ought to interview the various players. Here. Yes. Uh, players. Mr. Molitor, will you step over this way? We're underway now. If I'm breathing a little heavily... <laughs> I'll get Mr. Molitor. We're Come climbing. right up, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fox. Uh, Mr. Molitor, uh, you play golf? I think I do. Uh, do you no. putt in your library? <laughs> always, every evening after dinner. He always practices putting in his library after dinner. Hey, that was playing the second ball. That was Chick Molitor, and we're now coming to uh, his drive. <coughs> I mean, we're with, a, well, about 50 yards. <laughs> <laughs> we they, uh, huh? Get another wire? Oh, yes, we did get another wire here, yes. It says, uh... Oh, it's from Major Bowes. Major Bowes. Oh, that right? that's fine. Maybe we can make his hour tonight. A, one, a one-word radiogram. It says gong. Oh, oh fine. I see. <laughs> we finally got it, huh? Yeah, and one from Tony Monaro, too, the new open golf champion, bud. Oh, really? What do he have to say? Boo. Boo. Well, that's that's fine. The wires are coming in. I'm now we're, uh, we're approaching, uh, we're approaching, uh, Mr. Worth. Will you step over here a minute? Uh, this is Bill Worth who was playing the uh, 18th hole. If I'm breathing heavily, we're climbing a hill, fellas. Um, with a putter, just to demonstrate his ability. I mean, he got at least five inches off the green with that first drive, didn't Well, but I found that's the best club. He found that was the best club. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this broadcast is coming to, to you through the courtesy of Foyth Boiners Incorporated, maker of, uh, of Foyth Boiner golf tees, Foyth Boiner golf stockings, and Foyth Boiners. We're now climbing the last uh, few feet of the hill, approaching the 18th green. Uh, right. By the way, there was just a golf shot there that a fellow missed. I know you didn't hear what he said when he missed it, so I'm going to say it for him. Shucks and fill sticks. <laughs> I like that. We cleaned that one up very nicely. And now, uh, Mr. Scott, will you step over, please, for just a moment? Mr. Scott, you play golf? Occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, how do you find uh, Soundview usually? I mean, is it fun? Plenty of fun. Oh, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Scott. We've got his golf game cleaned up. Yes. Uh, <coughs> who's the next gentleman? Who's the other gentleman in the foursome? Uh, Mr. Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, will you come up, please? Coming up, Jerry. Uh, uh, right there. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hernandez, sir. Uh, what is your name? My name is Ramon Martina Fernandez. <laughs> oh, the double talk. That's fine. That's <laughs> um, do you uh, putt in your library, Mr. Uh, Not very well. Do you desert your wife to play golf? Once in a while. Well, uh, thank you very much. Here's your package of Foyth pointers. That was our commercial announcement, friends. And uh, we now are going to sign off. And I've, uh, if I've asked the colonel to say a few words. Harry Hicks, Mario, all the gang here at Soundview are still around us. And uh, I want the Colonel to say a few words about the game of golf. Would you, Colonel, please? Uh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> the Magic Key now returns you to Radio City. Turning from the ridiculous to the sublime, we present one of the past season's outstanding musical sensations, the 22-year-old American violinist, Joseph Knitzer. At the age of 14, Mr. Knitzer made his debut as soloist with the New York Symphony under Walter Damrosch. But his career as a child prodigy was short. Turning his back resolutely on the public limelight, he devoted himself to years of hard study, a course which has been more than justified by his present mastery of the violin. The magic key of RCA turns to Joseph Schnitzer. (laughs) 
Mr. Knitzer has chosen for his first selection this afternoon the last movement of Mendelssohn's famous violin concerto in E minor. Thank you. 
an encore, Joseph Smithson, the sensational young American violinist, accompanied by Harry Sukman at the piano, will play Shane Rosemary by Fritz Kreisler. Young scientists, young businessmen, youth in America has always been a propelling force. And to the young men and women who will in the next few days be graduated from thousands of high schools, universities, and colleges throughout the country, the Radio Corporation of America has this to say. Radio is young. Modern radio is younger than many of you. Its rapid rise to importance should be both an example and an encouragement to all of you. Ten short years ago, the National Broadcasting Company first came into existence. This year, on its 10th anniversary, this broadcasting service of RCA is the largest in the world and undoubtedly the most potent medium ever devised for the dissemination of music, information, news, and entertainment. The same is true in communication. What was scarcely dreamed of a few years back is now a business necessity. 47 different foreign countries and a dozen cities of the United States are linked via RCA by the fastest and most direct means of radio telegraph contact known. And in the field of manufactured products, compare the early radio sets with the new 1937 RCA Victor Magic Brain Magic Eye Metal Tube radios, which will soon be on display. And you will be amazed at the progress made toward perfect tone reproduction. In recorded music and phonographs, in marine radio, in sound motion pictures, in every interrelated field the Radio Corporation of America enters, we find the same record of youthful accomplishment. When we say, for every service in radio, use RCA, it is because we know that, being still young, we shall continue, like yourselves, to go forward in the future. We shall see to it always that using RCA is to your own advantage.
concluded by Frank Black and the NBC concert orchestra was Zazuela from La Combe Suite, La Feria. We cordially invite you to be with us next Sunday when the Magic Key will turn again and members of the family of RCA will present a distinguished program of Wagnerian music played for you by 70 picked members of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra under the leadership of Frank Black, NBC's noted musical director. Milton Cross, speaking for one member of the family of RCA, the National Broadcasting Company and its Blue Network. <laughs>